pleased to be here and thank you for a kind invitation and hospitality. Always great to see uh, some long-term friends and collaborators and also a lot of students coming to my talk, so thank you for coming. So my talk fa falls into the realm of computable model theory or more generally computable mathematics. Uh, in this case maybe more algebra, computable algebra as part of model theory, I guess where we go into classical mathematical structures uh, and use computability theoretic notions and tools to investigate the algorithmic content or non-algorithmic content of in these structures and use complexity theoretic me uh, computability theoretic measures to study complexity of various uh, mathematical objects such as structures, relations and functions and see how algebraic structure in, interacts with, uh, with algorithmic nature and uh, computability theory in general. So, uh, the structure I'll consider here is just a, a structure with a single binary operation which doesn't have to satisfy any axioms, but it may satisfy some axioms. And um, we use a term due to Bourbaki, a magma for such a structure. So special cases of magmas are groups or semi-groups or some other intermediate structures which satisfy some of the usual axioms, but maybe not all. And uh, we're interested in uh, computable structures. So a magma is computable if its domain is a computable set, so we can identify the elements of the domain, and the operation is computable. So these uh, computable magmas are abundant, for example, rationals with plus or um, or rationals minus zero at the time, or integers with plus. So almost any structure you can think of is going to be computable, the nice representation of that structure. Now these particular examples, Q plus and Z plus, they also have, in addition to addition, they have a relation, they have the order relation on them, which is outside of the structure. And that order relation agrees with the structure. So if, if one number is less than the other and you, uh, you add some number, you will still maintain that relation. So that allows us to uh, define a relation, an order relation on magma in general. And uh, we can also define a left order, right order, or, or simply an order or a by order as follows. So a left order on a magma is a linear ordering of the domain, of the elements of the domain, such that that ordering is invariant with respect to the operation. So ordering is not part of the structure. These are not order, ordered structures. These are orderable structures. So order is an additional relation. And invariant means that if x is less than y, then if we multiply on the left by z, then z times times is just generic uh, name for operation. Z times X is less than Z times Y. And similarly, we can define a right order. And in the case of abelian groups, it wouldn't matter. Uh, so right order is right invariant. And if a single relation satisfies both right and left invariant property, then we'll call it a by order. So if x is less than y, then zx will be less than z times y, but also xz will be less than y times z. Uh, important examples of magmas are groups, and actually orders have been studied more on groups and semi-groups than, than on other structures, and they have been studied for a long time in, in algebra, in logic, in uh, topology, and other fields of mathematics. So, one interesting thing about groups is that orders come in pairs. So together with every left order, there is a right order um, defined uh, as follows. If x is, x is less than, than y by the right order, if and only if y inverse is less than left, then x inverse. So we reverse y and x and take the inverses. And this is the proof that it's right order, assuming less than L is the left order. So x is less than y, we assume that, and we want to show right invariance. So that means y inverse is less than left than x inverse. And now we can multiply by arbitrary z on the left. Well, let's multiply by arbitrary z inverse on the left and use the group 
periodic property that z inverse y inverse is yz inverse. So we get yz inverse less than less than xz inverse. And that's exactly by definition xz less than yz in the right order. So we always look for pairs. Um, so like if we have z plus together with the usual order, we have the reverse order. And in this case, left and right doesn't matter because it's an abelian group. And if the group G is computable, then these two orders will have the same Turing degree of complexity. Turing degree measures uh, relative computational complexity of two problems or two sets. Because if the group is computable, then the multiplication is computable, the inverse operation will be computable, and the right and left orders can be computed from each other. So they're actually computable, basically. And one of the first important properties of left orderable group, or, or any magma that has identity, is that it's torsion free. So we cannot get that x to the n has a finite order um, for x that's not identity. So if x is, for example, positive, we can multiply by x, so we get x less than x squared. Then again, we multiply by x, we get x squared less than x cubed, and so on, it's transitive. So x to the n will always be greater than identity. So you can't get identity from a positive element or a negative element. So when we talk about orderable groups who are left orderable or right or, or bi-orderable, we look at torsion-free groups. For um, some groups, this is enough for the reverse conclusion. For example, uh, uh, abelian groups, which are torsion-free or orderable. And more general, torsion-free nilpotent groups are orderable. But this is not true in general. Here is an example due to Rolfson of a torsion-free group, non-abelian torsion-free group, which is not left orderable. It can be shown that it's not left orderable, but it's torsion-free. So this group is given by its presentation. It has two generators, x and y. And satisfy these two relators, x, y square, x inverse y square, which basically means that x and y squared commute, but y squared changes to y minus 2. And the same is true with y x squared. So y x squared equals x to minus 2 times 1. And in addition to individual orders on orderable structures, we also look at a set of all orders and look at their topological structure and the complexity of the elements, like a spectrum. <coughs> of uh, complexity for these relations. So for a magma by LOM, we'll denote the set of all left orders, by ROM, the set of right orders, and by the set of all by orders. And so these are examples. I already talked about Z plus. It has only two orders, the usual order and the reversed order. They're both computable. Z square plus, so this is Z plus Z, so uh, pairs of, net of integers with addition defined component-wise, this structure already has continuum many, two to the L and zero orders. And the same is true for any number n, z to the n plus n tuples of integers with plus, they continue many orders. So those orders will have, could have interesting topological structure and also will have a lot of, uh, they will have uh, Turing degrees of arbitrary complexity because each Turing degree has only countably many elements because the algorithms could be listed uh, and relative algorithms could be listed so that most countably many of them. So they'll have very complicated orders even when the groups are computable. And similarly z to the omega, so this is the direct sum of omega many infinitely many, countably infinitely many copies of z. So sum means that we look at the tuples of uh, arbitrary length of integers, but they're finite. Almost all of the components are zero. In addition, is component-wise. So there's no bound on the, on the length of the tuples. So that's the sum. So we still get a countable structure. If the nice copy is a computable copy, but this structure also has continuum many orders, and in some sense contains z to the n. 
And um, Ritz Olmos showed in uh, 2002 that in general, if we have a billion group, a computable torsion free abelian group of finite rank, finite rank n greater than 1, like z squared or z cubed, then there is an order in every single Turing degree, computable and, and any above. If we have a computable torsion free abelian group of infinite rank, like z to, uh, z to the omega or q to the omega, then there is an order in every Turing degree which is greater or equal than the degree of the halting set, which is a non-computable set that Turing invented, uh, discovered originally in his original paper. And we denote it by zero jump. Uh, can, you, can you remind the, what is Turing degree, roughly? Uh, two, one set is of uh, less or equal Turing degree than the other set, if the bigger set, uh, the smaller set can be computed from the bigger set. Okay. And uh, they are this, so that's a partial relation. And the Turing degree is the equivalence class uh, when they're both, the Turing equivalent if they can be computed from each other. For example, set and complement always have the same Turing degree. Because mm -hmm. you can compute, if you know the complement, you can compute the set. So, and if we have a computable torsion free properly and step Nilpotent group, so this is the length thing, this nil potency. Uh, then it has every order, it has an order in every Turing degree which is above to the degree, the degree of the nth iteration of the halting set. So, um, which we denote with zero to the nth jump. So we, we now use the previous halting set as an oracle, um, as a black box to compute the next halting set. Yeah, so one way to think of Turing degrees is uh, is relative computability. So instead of computable, we have x computable, where x is the black box, the additional information that's added to the algorithm, which is not like question, but you can use that information, and that's called oracle. Uh, this doesn't say that there are no Turing degrees elsewhere. It just says it contains these upper cones uh, of Turing degrees. And there, there are a lot of Turing degrees if they're not bounded. So Down and Kurtz showed uh, in 1986 that there is a computable torsion free abelian group, hence orderable, that has no computable order. In particular, they constructed a group which is isomorphic to Q to the omega with plus. Therefore, it's orderable, has a lot of orders, continue many, but it doesn't have a computable order. So this would be a, a negative result in computable mathematics when you cannot effectivize a statement. Well, in that case, what do you do? You look for counterexamples or you look for best possible approximation. Is there anything else we can say? Well, in this case, uh, Dobritza showed in 1983 that every computable torsion free abelian group is isomorphic to a computable group with a computable order. And uh, computability theoretic properties are not preserved under isomorphisms because we deal with data, presentation of data. And this computable order comes from a computable basis, so that's infinite basis. Computable, you can order it lexicographically and then you can obtain orders. And that question was open for non-abelian groups, which are orderable. And recently, uh, Matthew Harris Trainer showed there's a computable right, left orderable group that is not isomorphic to any computable group that has a computable left order. And this, this is open for bi-orders, bi because we're dealing with uh, non-commutative groups here. And the results are not always easy to transfer. So, uh, when we talk about groups, and uh, this is true in general, we recently extended that to arbitrary magmas, uh, orders have very algebraic way a very algebraic structure. Instead of orders, we can look at their positive cones and their sub semigroups. So a positive cone is a set of all elements in a group that are greater or equal than identity. So we, we include, it's really non negative. And P inverse is the negative cone, all the elements that are negative or identity. We need to include the identity for convenience. This notion can be even defined for a partial left order where elements are partially ordered but they have, but if x is less than y, then z times x has to be 
comparable to z times y and less than. So if we have a positive cone p, then positive times positive will be positive. So p times p is contained in p. That's a semigroup by sub semigroup property. And also p intersection p inverse has to be the identity. So we can't have one element being both positive and negative. So if we have just these two algebraic properties, then we can define a partial order on the group as follows. We just say x is less than y if and only if x inverse y is positive. And why is that an order? Because if x inverse y is positive, then we can insert for an arbitrary z, we can insert z inverse z in the middle, and then we can group x inverse and z inverse, and that be, uh, so x, z x inverse times z y belongs to p, but that exactly means that z x is less than z y. So we get left order from these two properties. We also get transitivity in the and all the properties uh, of the order. Of course, if we want a total order, we need to add that p union p inverse is g, so that every element is ordered. It's a total ordering. And in order to have by order, we have the following algebraic condition. For every element of a group, g inverse p, g is contained in p, which is nor property of a normal sub group. So if we have a by order, of course, we can multiply in a positive element y, we can multiply by g inverse on the left and g on the right. And we get that g inverse y, g is greater than g inverse g, which is identity. So it's positive, right? And uh, if we assume this algebraic property, then we can define the order the usual way, x inverse y is positive. And we can use this property to show that it's now right invariant. That means that we multiply by z inverse on the left and z on the right, because that's the normality property. And we get that xz inverse yz is positive, and that's exactly that xz is less than yz. So we can describe a by order by these four properties. p times p is containing p, p intersection, p inverse is E, P union P inverse is G, and for every element of the group, G inverse P, G is containing P. So we give, and, and that's equivalent to, to having the, a by order. Those are all universal, aren't they? Yes. Okay. So if we have Z plus Z, now we can see how we can give by orders. We, we can give them by cones, right? So basically we can draw a line in the, in the plane and declare all elements on one side positive and on the other negative and take half a line and declare it to be positive or negative. So for example all the pairs A B where A is positive or A is zero and B is non negative. So that's a that's a positive cone. Or we can take any other line. So now you can see why you have continuum many because the lines can have irrational slopes. And that irrational slope could be a, in some sense, tuning degree code for the complexity of the order. Now, uh, an easiest example of a, of a left orderable group that's not bi orderable is Klein bottle group. So we can look at it as just having two generators, A and B, and one relation, A inverse BA is B inverse. This is the same as BA commutes, but then B becomes B inverse. BA equals AB inverse. And we can see that it has left orders by looking at positive cones. One such positive cone is A to the N, B to the M, where N is positive, or N is zero and M is non-negative. So it's really different from the previous one, but it has the same form. And then you can show the four properties. And that's it. In this case, it doesn't have all four. It will not have the last one, but it will have the first three, and therefore it will be a left order. So, so fundamental group of any non-orientable manifolds would be of space. It's would have the same problem, right? Yeah, so that was a big result that came in, what, 2000, that all the fundamental groups except for projected plane and Klein bubble are bi-orderable. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, one of the reasons we actually started looking at this orders with some topologists and some logicians. 
But the, fund the projected plane is not orderable, but this one is not orderable, but it's left orderable. It's easy to see that it's not biorderable. It's kind of the relation is made that way. If you assume that B is positive, right? Then you multiply by A inverse. You assume you, this is a biorder, so you can multiply both on left and right. If you multiply by A inverse on the left and B and A on the right, then you get A inverse B A is greater than E because A inverse A will be E. But A inverse B A, that's exactly B inverse. So B is positive if and only if B inverse is positive. So that's not possible. That's the same as B being positive and negative. We can show that every biorderable or left orderable computable for every biorderable and left or left orderable computable model, there is a computable binary tree, tree just with zeros and ones. And there is a bijection between biorders on the magma and the infinite paths in the tree. And that bijection preserves Turing degree. So in the binary tree, we can think of 0 as a less than b and 1 as b, b less than a. Or if we have a group, we can think in terms of cones that uh, 1 means this, the corresponding element for that level is positive and the other means negative or vice versa. So uh, this allows us to transfer a lot of results from, from structures to the results of computable binary trees in their paths. Um, computable binary trees in their paths have been extensively studied in computability theory and in relation to pi zero one one class because many mathematical problems can be presented that way. So there's a whole body of results about Turing degrees of these infinite paths, which now correspond to our orders, that we can deduce uh, immediately. For example, if a computable magma has only finitely many by orders or left orders, they all must be computable, because that's true about the computable tree with, uh, with finitely many paths. And there's, uh, we saw that a computable orderable group doesn't have to have a computable order but it has, must have an order which is pretty close to a computable one, which we call low, or of low Turing degree in computability theory. And that follows from the low basis theorem of Jokush and Soar for uh, these infinite binary trees. So the Turing degree is low if it has the same uh, halting set as the computable degree. So this degree, it doesn't have to be computable, but the halting set uh, behaves the same way. Another conclusion we can draw is that left orderable computable magma has an order, a left order of a computably enumerable Turing degree. So if there are infinitely many um, Turing degrees, uh, and it doesn't, they don't all have to be computable, but at least has to be a computably enumerable, which is one where. Um, Computably enumerable means there's an algorithm which enumerates the set versus recognizing the set. So this is a back to klein bottle group, how left orders and by orders differ in general. So if we have a by order, we do the usual thing. A is less than B and C is less than D. We can multiply AC and BD and AC is less than BD. Right, A is less than B. We multiply by C on the right. So AC is less than BC. C is less than D, we multiply on the left, so BC is less than BD. And by transitivity, AC is less than BD. Well, this is not true for a left order. So in the case of a klein bottle group, um, for example, B and A square commute. We can show that uh, they commute, and uh, we can use that to show that BA square and A square are same. So B A squared is B A B A and that's A B inverse B times A and that's exactly A squared. But B A and A are different elements. So either B A is greater than A or A is greater than B A but um, their squares are the same. So this is not going to preserve this uh, this property that we have for by orders. So we have to be careful when we deal with one-sided orders. The other structure outside of groups and semi-groups 
that are orderable, which are less studied, or they're not so well studied. And one that comes from um, low dimensional topology from knot theory. And one such structure is called the quandle. It has three axioms which try to capture the three Rademeister moves um, for knots. And uh, the third axiom is probably the most important because associativity in some sense is replaced by right self distributivity. So A times B times C is A times C times B times C. And the quantum can still be uh, associative, but it doesn't have to be. So it has to have self-distributivity, idempotence, so A times A is A. And for every B, the mapping that B induces, A times B, is bijective. Which basically means that for every B and every C, there is a left inverse A, so that A times B equals C. So it does have this left inverse in the other two properties. So these structures are uh, abundant in topology. And uh, one of these is a trivial model. This is where the operation is just the left, the projection, A times B equals A. And it, it goes, satisfies all of these axioms. And what's interesting for us is that every linear ordering of the elements of Q is right invariant. So in that sense, orders on the structure are extensions of just linear ordering on sets on their, on their domain. One of the more interesting quandals are obtained from groups, and they're called conjugate quandals. And in some sense, this quandal tries to capture the conjugation of the group. So it's defined by A star B equals B inverse A B. So that's a quandal, and this is checking that the axioms work. A times A is A. And for every, for every B and for every C, there's a unique left inverse. We just need to solve this equation for A, it's B, C, B inverse. And we can check cell distributivity by just doing this conjugation. The element on the right is inverted times A times B. So every pi order on an orderable group G induces the right order on the conjugate quantum. And it's easy to show. It's basically the same. The group and the quantum share all the elements. But the operations are different, of course. And the relations will be the same. We start with a by order B on a group G and look at the same relation, the same set of pairs R. But now we show that it's a right order on a quantum. So if A, B is in B, and C is an arbitrary element, thinking of it as an element from the quantum, we can um, multiply by C inverse on the left and C on the right. But it exactly means A star C, B star C, where star is in the quantum, so it is the right order. So we don't quite understand the relationship between uh, orders of quantals on the groups. Every by order of a group induces a right order of a quantal, but we don't know whether, um, in some cases, where the other orders come from, or the quantal come from. Uh, it's, there's an easy example of an abelian group with torsion, such a group will not have by orders because it has torsion. But um, its conjugate quantal will be a trivial quantal, so it will admit many orders, as many orders as their linear orders on its domain. And, and that's a lot. There is a natural topology on the, on the set, soon to become space, of left, right, or by orders on M. And the subbasis is given by pairs of elements, S, A, B, where A and B are not from the diagonal. They're not the same. A is different from B. So we're looking at all the, art, uh, all the left orders R, which contain um, this, uh, this relation R. So we're looking at all the relations R, which are left order, in which A is less than B. So we fix pair A and B, and we're looking at all the, all the orders which contain that relation. So this is a sub-basis, and uh, this gives a topology which, uh, is, a co which, which is compact. And uh, so we show this result with Dabrowska, Dabkowski, Pschetitsky, and, and Weave, 
uh, some time ago, and it's true for any cardinality, not only for accountable, but in general. So if we start with a left order of magma, which has some cardinality m, which is, it has to be infinite, greater or equal than L is zero, then we can show the space of left orders and the by orders and the right orders, they are compact spaces. And uh, we use a some theorem from point set topology called Vaginisov's theorem, where the space of left orders can be embedded in the Cantor cube, zero, one to the m, and then we show that it's a closed subspace and that's enough to show compactness. In the case of a countable magma, this space of left orders is metrizable. And if we have a, a group, then we can also, there's another way to establish the set of left orders compact using this theorem that's attributed to Ornishi, Yawash, or Conrad which uh, gives us criteria when a partial left order can be extended to a total left order. And that's exactly when um, you start with any finite number of non-identity elements, x1, xn, and then you can choose whether you want to choose the element or the inverse. So you have a collection of uh, subscripts, one or negative one, one for the element, negative one for inverse, and you look at sub semi group that is partial positive cone P, and these elements generate, of course, without E. And this sub semi group should not contain identity. Because identity will mean that some element is declared both positive and negative, and that's, that's a contradiction. So, this is also a criterion of, of when partial left order can be extended to, to a total left order. For some groups, it's always possible like the z to the n, and for some it's not, like with free groups. So, uh, Sikora showed that the space of orders, in this case it's uh, community, so it's the same as left orders or by orders, of z squared, it's homeomorphic to the Cantor set. So for z we have only two elements, for z squared we have continuum many, and they form the Cantor set. And that was an exciting result that called that kind of inspired further study of this subject. And the way how he so showed it is that if we have a countable group which is left orderable, then it will be homeomorphic to the Cantor set if and only if for every uh, finitely many elements of subbases, the intersection is either empty or infinite. Because we have other properties of uh, totally disconnected and compact and so on. And then later, Dabkowska uh, showed that the space of left orders of z to the omega is homeomorphic to the Cantor set. Now we know of different ways of showing this one, the second result, uh, using the uh, purely computability theoretic result. Because we can get a copy with a non-computable order and we can use that to show Cantor set. Uh, however, they're countable groups with infinitely countably many by orders, and um, we don't know much about the, the complexity of orders on these groups, they, they, except for what follows from the, from the results about computable trees and the infinite paths. Uh, this is also where left orders and, and by orders differ. Linnell showed that the space of left orders um, of a countable left orderable group is either finite or contains a copy of the Cantor set. So it cannot be just countably infinite. So when Sikora showed that the space of orders on Z square is the Cantor set, he also made a conjecture that the same must be true for free groups. So for n equals one, of course, for, for n greater than one, for n equals one, we just have Z. And so he conjectured that, uh, so free group with n elements of uh, rank n is just uh, a group of words generated by n elements. It doesn't have any additional relations. Um, so it's just all the words that each, each word has the inverse and there's identity and there's nothing else. So this problem turned out to be very difficult. And it was solved for left orders by Navas Flores, who mainly works in dynamical systems. It was solved in 2008 and maybe published in 2010. But it is still open for by orders. 
on Fn. So Navas Flores showed that the space of left orders on free group Fn for n greater than 1 is homeomorphic to the Cantor set. But his method doesn't apply to bi orders because um, these groups are not commutative. So. so, in an attempt to better understand this problem Fn with Tapkowski, Tapkowski, and Toga, we showed that um, for a computable group G, which is isomorphic to this free group, for a nice copy of Fn of n greater than n, we have a a bi order in every Turing degree. So our arbitrary complexity can be computable or any other Turing degree. And more recently with uh, Chubb and Zakowski, we extended that to so-called strong degrees, which are known as true table degrees. So these are, these are some class of degrees which are stronger than Turing degrees. They give even a finer uh, complexity measure. So this is a proof sketch for Turing degrees for free group of, of, of arbitrary finite rank greater than 1, and how we use results from combinatorial group theory to obtain um, algorithmic complexity of orders. So for a group G, we start with a lower se uh, central series, which is just descending sequence of subgroups. With, uh, gamma 1 is G, and gamma alpha plus 1 is just commutator of the previous one in G, and where the commutator is just A inverse B inverse A, B. And for limit ordinals, we just have the intersection. So we have these descending sequences of, of groups in a lower central series. And Magnus showed that for Fn, this sequence stops at omega, which is the smallest infinity. Um, so that the intersect, so, so gamma omega, because omega is a limit order, will be the intersection of all the previous <coughs> ones. And that's exactly the identity element, so we start there. So now we have this infinite sequence of these pieces of the group, and that's good in computability theory because you can use them as natural numbers and use each piece to code something. The quotient groups in this sequence between gamma i and gamma i plus 1 are isomorphic to z to the ki, which is the abelian group, and we know the order, it has a lot of orders. And we can even compute this ki. It's given by an equation which includes Mobius function, which is you know, m1 or plus 1 or 0. So it can exactly be computed from i and from uh, m. I is the, the place of the sequence, and N is the rank of the group. And so, the, so we can use this sequence to, uh, to construct a bi order using bi orders on these quotient groups, which are abelian groups uh, that have a lot of orders. And different choices of these orders on quotients will induce different orders of Fn. And then uh, we can exactly uh, encode arbitrary Turing degree in our desired order. So we, in, in, in some of these algorithms, we use Fox calculus to, to find, because we have to do everything algorithmically. So uh, we couldn't solve the problem whether um, Fn, the byte orders of Fn form a Cantor set, so we looked at the uh, uh, the infinitely many gener infinitely countably many generators. So F infinity is a free group of rank L of zero, L of zero smallest infinity. So it has infinite so now our alphabet is infinite and we can write words over that alphabet and each has it at, at its inverse. And we show there is a computable copy of this group with no computable left order. This is an unpublished manuscript with uh, Julian Wright and um, others. So, uh, and more recently, in my student Ha, I, um, we showed that if we look at the conjugacy quantum of this group, we can also find a computable copy of the conjugacy quantum that doesn't have a computable left order, and hence no computable bi order, of course. Uh, we can, if we have something of finite rank or finite base, then we always get computable, because we can order the base elements, and that gives us a lexicographic computable work. Now we can use this results to show that the spaces of orders 
on this group are homeomorphic to the Cantor set, both for free group with infinitely many generators and for the conjugacy quantum of this group. I think it's known, um, I think topologists know some of these results for, for the free group with infinitely many generators, but we'll get the topological result from the computability theoretic result. So we have copies of these groups, they don't have computable copies, and they don't have computable orders. So now we use our conversion from a, from a structure to the tree. So for every left orderable computable group, there is a computable binary tree. And a Turing degree preserving bijection between groups and uh, Turing degree preserving uh, bijection between the left orders and the infinite paths. Now, an isolated path in a computable tree must be computable because you can design easily an algorithm where you chase the, the elements of that path. And um, in a computable, so therefore in a computable binary tree with infinite paths and no computable one, the space of paths is homeomorphic to the Cantor set. So we can take one copy where there is no computable order. We have corresponding tree which is computable and doesn't have computable path. And in that particular copy, we get Cantor set but topology of the space of orders does not depend on the isomorphism, so it's the same for the whole isomorphism class. So we also try to generalize our construction for free groups of finite rank, uh, which are ones where the, the, the chain, the lower central series ended with, with omega, to a class of called residually nilpotent groups, which are not nilpotent. They also finally presented. So uh, those are groups where this chain exactly ends at E. So our re general result is as follows. G is a finitely presented torsion-free, has to be torsion-free to be orderable, computable group. And it's residually nilpotent, but nilpotent. That means the slower central series ends at omega. And we have some more conditions, the quotients gamma i over gamma i plus 1 are non-trivial and torsion-free. And in that case, we can construct a bi-order in every Turing degree, even in every two-table degree, which is a stronger version. And now examples of these groups are surface groups of genius n greater than 1. And so they have, not, they're not just orderable, but they have a lot of orders. They have orders in every Turing degree. And those are groups that can be viewed as having two n generators, x1, y1, so on, xn, yn, and they satisfy one relator. So this commut the product of these commutators is identity. If we don't write equals to something, we mean equals identity. But we also have some other groups which are more exotic, like finite degenerated one relator para-free groups. Um, those are groups I'm uh, not very familiar with, but they were introduced by Bautzlag and they're important. And those are residually nilpotent groups, and the quotients by the terms of the lower central series are the same as those for free group. So in some sense they are similar to them. They are also right angle arcing groups, which are kind of cool because we start with a graph, G, which has finitely many vertices, um, but greater than two and with the edges, instead of edges, and then the group has present the generators, it has that many generators and vertices, and then for every edge, ij, we have the commutator, so xi, xj. And um, thank you very much. Thank you, any questions? Maybe like a technical <laughs> question. Uh, when you say that uh, the space of orders is homomorphic to to Cantor set, you mean they have the same tree structure, or there is like the more precise topology, which is uh, well, you can either look at this topology. It is the same tree structure, basically. Yeah, because the, when a tree, the that's a topology, right? Right. If uh, if it's metrizable, then you look how far are these nodes from each other, one over two, two. So in the sense of when do they connect in the tree? Right, right? exactly. Okay, okay. So the sub base is so it's the same topology. So the sub base will start with the node on the tree and look at all the my trees usually grow down, but, <laughs> and you know, all the extensions of that node. That would be the sub bases, right? Yeah, I see. And so we managed to transfer the 
the group to the tree, right? And the levels correspond to enumeration of elements in the group, and then one can correspond that element is positive and zero negative, right? And, okay. and so, so if we get a contradiction, then the branch doesn't grow, right? It's not a part. It's not extension to. But it is the usual topology. Yeah.